everybody, Nick from Homebury Gaming here, just giving you guys a little quick update video on Banky's Bash and Farmer's intro deck from the set The Von Guzer Prophecy. Now, this is going to be a very like simple, straightforward video. As you can see, I'm kind of doing it in the style of your traditional homemade card game project because I felt like um, doing things digitally for this would be a little more difficult, especially because I want to show the physical boxing and stuff. Now, this is an example of one of the three intro decks from the first set of the Von Guzer Prophecy. As you can see right here, Benke's Bastion Farmers, and on the back, it will list basically a quick little description, the name of it, and also basically the particular cards that are in this deck. Now, along with these also come right here, as you can see, some instructions, and uh, the front, the first page is basically all the text, and the second page will introduce all the visual aids and whatnot. So I'll open this real quick just to give a quick example. All right, so here's the first page. And as you can see, it's on this nice, there we go. It's on this nice um, harder stock, heavier stock of paper. So it's easy to hold on to and it has all the info you need. The backing, as you can see, is just more info. Basically, it goes into detail quite a bit, not too much. It basically describes everything you need to play the game. Um, it also has this nice border, which is from a piece of artwork that I did a while back for Clash. But um, anywho, I should show the second piece now. And here we go. Now, this will obviously just show you all of the particular, um, basically like different things, as you can see right here. Player side of the field, player side of a Clashington. It gives you the whole general idea as to how the board layout is supposed to be. It also gives you examples of like certain types of minions um, and just the general minion with the different types of effects, like the name, the level, type, effects, slash abilities, and buffiness. And then the second side is basically more visual aids, as you can see, events and circumstances, um, and also a little tidbit about like if you want to see more from Homebury Gaming. Now, moving on from there, I'm going to set this all aside. And after I put that down, I'm going to open up the deck box so you guys can get a better idea as to what's in this deck. Now, I did do a video of this a while back. I think it was the second episode of Clash that I did, but this is a much more updated version. I'm even going to set like a description in that video that will link to this video just to make sure that um, people can see the most updated cards. Now I do have annotation description changes in the original video, just so if people are using that as a reference, they can still have these cards, or at least like the text of these cards on there. So if you're on that video or this video, it's gonna be the same regardless, metaphorically speaking. Now, in order to start things off, I'd say just take a look at these, the cards real quick. Very nice. Um, as Granai Games, as some other people have been mentioning that um, the card stock is a little lighter than like a lot of other cards, but to be honest, it's still very, very nice quality. I was very content with how the product turned out. Um, backing, as you can see, as I've just shown right now, and all the cards are basically in the Banky's Bash and Farmers deck. So I'll go through these cards individually. We've seen these cards before. I had them on the other episodes, but I thought it'd be better just to give a little introduction to what particular cards are in this. So starting things off, we have Bam, just your typical one action cost basic event that will deal 15 buffy damage to a main in a Clashington. It's your straightforward, just the own damage card, and the farmers have this just as a little boost because them naturally, they don't have that much buffy damage incorporated. Uh, Constant Planter, he's one of the many farmers. Basically what he does is when you play him, you can place your hand, which must be a minimum of one card, into your deck, shuffle it, then draw three new cards. He's great if you have a hand that's not really useful at the moment and you have plans on rearranging things. Uh, he's not the strongest of minions, as has been stated, but he's still a great character to have in a Clashington. Bugging Beetle, this guy is a little interesting because he's placed on the opponent's side of a field one played, but basically he makes all of your opponent's means lose buffiness, five to be exact. I know it's probably really difficult to see the text on here, but um, we'll work with it as we go. And also, if it is slapped out, the slapping minion loses 10 buffiness, so it's a whole incentive of trying to basically take down your opponent's monsters by weakening them. Now, Brussels Sprout Bomb, as you can see, uh, in the original video, like this is probably one of the biggest change cards, and even then it's not that big of a change. Uh, it originally had a one action cost to it, but now it's zero action. So this can be played for completely free, and its ability is it allows you to get a level 2 or lower minion of your choice in an empty minion slot 
in that Clashington to regain consciousness. So obviously the incentive is to use it on your minions, but if you have some grand planned that works for the opponent's side, you could do that as well. And at zero actions, you can't really complain about it. Barrel of Fishies, which is a zero action cost item circumstance. The way how this basically works is you could spend actions to place fishy minion tokens into the Clashington. They have the type of fishy, level one, buffing is 15, and are placed on your side of the Clashington. So this is basically a great, uh, great way to generate tokens on your side without using actual cards instead to gain some buffiness. Uh, extra copy of Bam. And here we go, Banky Longway. This is the main guy of the deck right here. He is a level 2 VIP farmer minion with 25 buff, which is definitely respectable. And as you can see, VIP basically means you can only have one Banky Longway on the field at any time. Uh, wall Conscious, the Clash 10 Banky Longway is placed in, acts as if you controlled the shovel. I'm going to move this in a little bit. Right about there. There we go. So um, basically, when he is played into a Clashington, it acts as if you have the shovel, but that does not mean it fills up your circumstance slot, which is pretty awesome because you can use that circumstance slot for other cards, like the Barrel of Fishies or other cards that are in this deck that are circumstances. While in the meantime, Banky is basically holding the shovel for you to use for the soil cards, which will also be introduced really soon. The Buffening, a very straightforward card. Zero actions for a circumstance and its basic circumstance. Like I said, uh, while this the buffening is active, means you control in this clash and gain five buffiness. So this would be a great card to play in incorporation with Banky Longway, just because Banky can have the shovel and then you can have this in there as well. So your means are getting buffed and your soil cards can still be used. So here we go, Stinky Soil, which is one of the two soil cards in the deck. It is an item event that naturally would only let you draw a card if you play it, but if you control the shovel in that Clashington, you may also make a level 2 or lower enemy minion in the Clashington unconscious. A great card for taking out enemies, but at the same time, since you get to draw a card from it, you're really not losing tempo, which is basically great because if you have the shovel on the field, this is just basically, as they call it, a plus one, like you gain that extra card over your opponent, and not to mention it takes out something on the field, which can be very essential um, in the game. Smart Soil is basically the opposite version of Stinky Soil in the sense that it does the same effect. It draws a card, say level 1 action cost item event, but if you control the shovel, instead you draw two cards and gain an extra action in that Clashington. So basically this is a zero action Papers Please with the assistance of the shovel. And Papers Please is obviously a card that will be shown really soon. Rush of Sugar. One of the very essential cards in almost any deck, a zero action cost item event, and its effect is that you gain extra action in that Clashington, you played it that turn. You cannot use that action to draw a card, which obviously um, that was basically the balance we made for this card, but it is still an amazing card to play because it's so essential to practically any deck because everybody always needs more actions. That's tempo in itself. Potato Master, here's your vanilla minion right here. Level 2, farmer minion, and has 30 buffiness. His effect, he has none. He just has the uh, flavor text, never underestimate the power of a good potato. And that's pretty right to be honest because for level two, 30 buffiness is definitely respectable. This guy, there are I believe three copies in this deck. So you'll probably see him throughout every single game you play, if not every single game, but he is basically just a nice little card to have because buffiness as always is essential to the game. Here we go, papers please. It is the one action cost, one action cost basic event card that lets you draw two cards. Now I say as I was saying before, Smart Soil can be like this, but at the same time since you gain an extra action after spending the action to play it if you have the shovel, that's the reason why Smart Soil can be better. The reason why Papers Please can be better is because you don't need the shovel for it. This is a more straightforward version of the card. And just like Rush to Sugar, this is a card that can be played in pretty much every deck and it's just a tempo gainer down the line. Horse Rash, this is an interesting little guy. He is a level 2 plant beast minion with 25 buffiness. His effect is that he gains 5 buffiness for each conscious farmer minion in his Clashington. So when you play him, not only is he gaining buffiness for your own farmers, but if your opponent is playing farmers, that's just more buffiness for himself. So this guy can get really strong really fast. And obviously since your deck is centered around farmers, he's bound to get strength from that. But if your opponent is playing a few, he's only going to get stronger. Dirt Speaker, uh, another staple-like card, and by staple I mean can be incorporated into most decks. Dirt Speaker is a level 1 15 buff spirit minion, and his ability is when he's slapped out. Basically, if you play another minion over him, the slapping minion, the card that you play, will gain 10 buffiness. This guy I love. He is one of the cards that 
as the creator and the developer of the game is one of my most favorite just because he is such a basic but helpful effect and I've been rolling with this guy for a long time now <laughs> but um yeah so Pounce Planter, another copy Bugging Beetle Blitz Beetle, uh, basically a variant of Bugging Beetle but this guy is much more simple in his ways a level 1 10 buffiness bug medium. His effect is that playing him does not cost an action, and only one can be played per turn. So this guy is an R tempo gainer. He doesn't provide a lot of buffiness, but that's in response to the effect of basically being played on the field without costing any actions. I've seen this guy used in a lot of decks, and he has been helpful in almost every single game that I played, along with some of my friends. So it's great that he's in this deck, so you guys can definitely work around with him. Now here we go, the shovel. In case you don't have Banky on the field, you can play this, which is a zero action cost item circumstance, and its effect is none because other cards basically list this card um, to use their effects. Obviously it's flavor taxes. Now what in Von Guzer's Guzzler could this be good for? Well, you'll see that on the other cards, like Stinky and Smart Soil. So, it's just a very straightforward card, and it has its purpose. Brussels Sprout Bomb, we've already seen. Cannibal Buster. This one's a little wordy, but I'll basically describe it as best I can. It is a zero action cost item circumstance, and the way how it works at the beginning of each of your turns, you gain a powder token on the buster. Uh, at any time you'd like during your turn, you can remove all powder tokens from it and make it inactive to make an enemy in the Clashington. Uh, basically, well, it deals buffy damage to a minion in the Clashington, equal to 10 times the amount of powder tokens removed from the Cannibal Buster when it is activated. This card is very amazing. It is like exceptional in how it can be played, but the only thing is it requires time. So you need to play this early. If you play it later in the game, it's not going to be that great, but it's still a great uh, versatile card to work with. Flower Buddy. This guy is one of the earlier development, or at least one of the earlier creations throughout the entire game of Clash, and he has a pretty cool effect. Being a level 3 uh, plant man, he has a 30 buffness, which is on the lower side of most level 3s, but his ability is when you play him, you can place a Bud Minion token, type Plant Level 1 Buffiness 10, on your side of another active Clashington. So although the token is not played in the same Clashington, it can definitely provide a little boost and fill up a slot in another Clashington so you can move a little closer to calling the Clash. A great card, as I've said. Third Speaker, another copy. Papers, please. Potato Master. Rabble Rouser. This is one of the cards added to the Farmer deck, because as I said before, um, the farmers naturally themselves do not have a lot of buffy damage, but that is why this guy is here. Level 3, 30 buff beast minion. His ability is when you play him, you may deal 15 buffy damage to a minion in the Clashington. So once again, another form of removal for the farmers, aside from like stinky soils that make level 2 or lower minions unconscious, and it's just an all-around another staple like card. Uh, another copy. And basically, uh, the way how we design set 1 is... A lot of the cards are versatile, with the exception of things like Smart Soil with the Shovel, but um, it basically works from there. Like uh, Stinkums right here, who is another stable light card. He is a level 1 Beast Minion, 15 buff, and his effect is that his buffiness cannot be decreased, which is great when in response to bugging beetles or other methods of how opponents and players in general can make minions lose buffiness. Now, although it says that its buffiness cannot be decreased, it can still be affected by buffy damage, because buffy damage is not a decrease in buff, it's just damage that is dealt and if they're ever dealt enough damage equal to their buffiness, they become unconscious. And our Blitz Beetle, Almanac's Farmer. This card is great. Level 1, 15 buff, Farmer Minion, and when you play her, you search your deck for a basic circumstance or a soil card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then you shuffle your deck. This card can easily fetch you a buffening. It can easily fetch you a lot of things, especially the soil cards if you have the shovel out. And for 15 buff, it's basically an average minion for level 1 on the field. A lot of people use this card um, a lot more than some of the other cards in this deck, because as I said, not only is it versatile, but for cards like the buffeting, the basic circumstance requirement, it is an easy way to find what you need. The shovel. Oh no, stinky so. I believe that is all the cards. I shall take a look real quick. The rabble rouser, our potato master. Horse Radish, Flower Buddy, and a final Almanac Farmer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy the Farmer deck, Banky's Bastion Farmers, and all the cards incorporated into the deck. Now this is game is, or at least this deck, is now featured on the Game Crafter. It includes the 40 cards in the deck, the deck box itself, and the instructions for 13 bucks. So if you guys would like to 
take a look, uh, the other two decks, Splug, Surprising Gobs, and Cheeks, Challenging Orcs, are also featured on the Game Crafter. But as I said, um, there will be two other videos incorporating one for the Gobs, uh, Cheeks as well for the Orcs. And from there, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and give a look out for more videos. So this has been Nick from Homebrewer Gaming, and I hope to see you guys again soon.